Hey gang, and welcome back. Just a reminder, you can now use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, at FlipSideGaming.com. You'll get 10% off orders over $10 and help with the channel at the same time. Before we get into this game, I just want to say happy holidays to everyone who's celebrating, and to those who aren't, I hope you're having a great Monday. For this little gift, I'm bringing you another gameplay, and this time we're featuring an Uncommander. This game, I am playing Max's Marie Gris Barrett, and I keep a hand with Ancient Tomb, Exotic Orchard, Chromatic Lantern, Cyclonic Rift, Merciless Eviction, Watery Grave, and an Island. Max and I switched it up, so he's actually playing my Locust God deck, and keeps a hand with Kinder Discovery, Unsubstantiate, Tormenting Voice, Impact Tremors, Preordain, Island, and Mountain. Eric is one of two people who I know who's built an Uncommander deck, and he built Dr. Julius Jumblemorph. His hand has a Plains, Two Forests, Success, Wild Crocodile, Hydrodoodle, and Angelic Rocket. Lastly, Phil, who's new to the channel, is playing his Kalia the Vast deck, and keeps a hand with Swamp, Smoldering Marsh, Dragon Skull Summit, Mountain, Razaket the Foul-Blooded, Terriel Reckoner of Souls, and Giselle the Broken Blade. Eric wins the die roll, and starts us off. Eric plays a Plains, and passes turn. I play Temple of Silence, scrying one, and keeping it on top. Max plays an Island, and casts Preordain. He puts one on top and one on the bottom, before drawing a card. Phil plays a Smoldering Marsh, which comes into play tapped, and passes. Eric plays a Forest, and I've gotta say I really like the full art on Stable Lands, before passing turn. I play an Ancient Tomb, tapping it in the Temple, taking two damage, to cast a Chromatic Lantern. Max plays a Mountain, and casts Serum Visions, drawing a card, and scrying two. Phil plays a Dragon Skull Summit, and passes turn. Eric plays a Plains, and casts Kark's Other Thumb. I play an island for my turn, and tap out to cast Vidalcan Orrery. Max plays a Shivan Reef before casting Commander Sphere, and passing turn. Phil plays a Plains, and also passes. Eric plays a Forest, and brings out THE Dr. Julius Jumblemorph. I play an Exotic Orchard for my land for turn, and cast Mariki before passing. For Max's turn, he casts a Rhystic Study, and I wish him better luck with it than I have. Phil plays a Caves of Koilos before casting his General, Kalia of the Vast. Eric plays a forest and casts a wild crocodile, which allows him to go and find a basic land and put it into his hand. Eric also gets the Dr. Julius Jumblemorph trigger and attaches the augment card Serpentine to make a Serpentine Crocodile. Eric then casts Squirrel Dealer, asking Josh, who's off camera, if he likes squirrels, to which Josh responds with a, huh? I guess so, yeah. I play a Watery Graves for my turn and take two as have it come into play untapped. Max draws for his turn and plays a Tarnished Citadel, which I really need to move to my Rakdos deck. Max then casts Impact Tremors and passes to Phil. Phil plays a Swamp and moves to combat. At the beginning of his combat step, Max casts Is It Charm to deal 2 to Kalia. Phil lets her hit the bin, and then taps out to cast Giselle the Broken Blade, taking 1 from his caves. Eric plays a Plains and gets to search his library for a basic and put it into his hand. He finds a Foil Forest because reasons. Moving to combat, Dr. Julius Jumblemorph forgets his Hippocratic Oath and attacks Max for 4. At the end of Eric's turn, I tap Mariki to steal the Serpentine Crocodile. I draw for turn, but have no lands to start the gravy train that is the Serpentine Crocodile. Instead, I take 2 to cast Liliana Vess, paying the 1 extra, and use her minus 2 to tutor for a card, which is almost certainly a land, and put it on top. Max plays a Ghost Quarter, and then casts the Locust God. All of his opponents take 1 as his commander comes into play, and Max passes turn. Phil plays a Swamp for his turn, and moves straight to combat, swinging Gisela at Max for 4. He gains 4 life, thanks to his Angel, and passes to Eric. Eric plays his Foily Force for turn, and pays to cast Hydradoodle, paying the extra 1. Eric rolls twice due to the thumb, and hits a 6 and a 5, keeping the 6. He then rolls again twice, hitting two 4s. This makes the Doodle a 10-10, and Eric passes turn. I draw and play Manamo School at Water's Edge, and get to use the Serpentine Crocodile's triggered ability finally. I grab a Plains, and down tick Liliana once more to tutor for a card, and put it on top. Max draws and gets an Insect, and his opponents take 1 from the Tremors. Max moves to combat, swinging the Locust God at Phil and the Lone Insect to finish off my Liliana. With the damage done, Max passes turn. Phil plays a Battlefield Forge for his land for turn, and taps out, taking 1 to cast Bruna the Fading Light. Phil can't pay the 1 extra, so Max gets to draw a card and deal 1 to his opponents as the Insect enters the battlefield. Max then casts Dream Fracture to counter the Angel, allowing himself and Phil to draw a card. This gives Max another Insect, and we all take a further point of damage. Moving to combat, Phil sings Gisela at Max, who chumps with one of his new insect tokens. Eric plays a Plains and casts Angelic Rocket. He uses the Enter the Battlefield trigger to destroy Max's Rhystic Study, and we realize he hasn't paid the 1, so Max gets to draw prior to the enchantment being destroyed. We all lose one from the insect entering the battlefield, and Eric gets to then use Dr. Julius Jumblemore's trigger and attaches the Augment card to make it a Humming Rocket, which sounds mildly horrifying. 
At the beginning of Eric's combat step, I use Monamo School at Water's Edge to untap my Mariki. This kills the augment host combo I'd previously stolen from Eric, and I retap Mariki to steal the humming rocket. Eric then declares he's attacking me with the Hydra Doodle, and I cast Vindicate at instant speed thanks to the Vidalcan Orrery. I then do my best impression of a rocket, and Eric passes turn. I play a Plains for my turn and cast Soul Ring since I can play on other people's turn thanks to Orrery. With nothing else, I pass. Max draws for turn and gets another Insect, which in turn deals one to us thanks to the Impact Tremors. He then plays an Island and casts Kindred Discovery naming Insects. Moving to combat, I take two to tap the Ancient Tomb and cast Merciless Eviction naming Enchantments. Max then tries to unsubstantiate the spell back to my hand, which will work, but not before I cast Cyclonic Rift to bounce the Discovery back to his hand. This rains on Max's parade a bit, and he passes to Phil. At the end of Max's turn, I cast Mystical Tutor to find a counter spell and put it on top. Phil plays a Nomad Outpost and pays 7, taking 2 from his Painlands to cast Chancellor of the Annex. Moving to combat, Phil swings Giselle at Eric for 4 and gains 4 life. Eric pays 5 and taps 1 extra from the Chancellor to cast the Labrobot. He returns the Crocodile to his hand, and his Dr. Julius Trigger finds the Monkey Augment card to make a Monkey Bot. For my turn, I untap and draw my counterspell before passing. Max draws and gets another Insect, dealing one to everyone. He then casts Mana Echoes, paying the one extra to the Chancellor, and hold his creatures back. Phil plays a Plains and casts Raziketh the Foul-Blooded, which I allow to resolve. Moving to combat, Phil swings the Gisela at Eric, and I use Monamo to untap Mariki. Eric takes 4 and Phil gains 4, and at the end of Phil's turn, I tap Mariki to steal the Razaketh. With the trigger on the stack, Phil activates Razaketh, taking 2 and killing Gisela to shoot her for a card. The trigger is resolve, and I get to steal the Razaketh before we move to Eric's turn. Eric recasts Wild Crocodile in his main phase, and brings the Humming Augment out of his graveyard, attaching it to make a Humming Crocodile. He then plays a land for turn, and casts a Voracious Vacuum. He puts a plus one plus one counter on the Humming Crocodile, and augments the vacuum to create a half kitten, half vacuum. Moving to combat, Eric swings the Squirrel Token and the Squirrel Dealer, which triggers his Humming Crocodile, allowing him to find a basic land. Phil chumps with his Chancellor, and Max opts to take the one. At the end of Eric's turn, I sacrifice Mariki to Razaketh, taking two to find a card. I then flash in Merciless Eviction at the end of turn, naming creatures, to which the rest of the table isn't thrilled. I untap for turn and recast my Commander before passing. Max casts a Skull Clamp in his main phase, and I counter it knowing how strong the Locust God, Mana Echoes, and Clamp are when working together. Max then casts Tormenting Voice, discarding Past in Flames, and plays an Island after drawing. Max then passes turn. Phil plays a Mountain for his turn, and casts Stranglehold. Phil then casts a Dawnbreak Reclaimer, and moves to the end of his turn. He targets Max with the Reclaimer trigger, as he has no creatures in the bin, and Max gives Phil back his Cali of the Vast. Eric casts Border Guardian, because the silliness never ends with his deck. He then drops a secret base, and recasts his commander, giving the Guardian a counter. At the end of Eric's turn, I flash in Fate Stitcher. For my turn, I draw and cast Rings of Bright Hearth before passing. Max casts a Consecrated Sphinx in his main phase, and I suddenly know what I have to do. We all take one from the Impact Tremors, and at the end of turn, despite Max's protests, I tap Mariki, paying two with the Ancient Tomb to use the Rings and steal the Consecrated Sphinx and Kalia. On Phil's draw step, I draw two when he draws one. Phil then casts some burial rites, but he goes a bit too quickly, bringing back his angels before people have a say. Max isn't thrilled with the idea of two angels coming back, and uses memory lapse to put the spell back on top of Phil's library. Phil then casts Hellkite Charger, and swings all of his creatures at me. I put Kali in front of the Dawnbreak Reclaimer, and I stop the Charger with the Sphinx as they won't trade. Phil then has Kali go back to his command zone, and uses the Dawnbreak Reclaimer's trigger once more, targeting Max, who gives Phil back the Gisela with the trigger. Eric casts Angelic Rocket, whose Enter the Battlefield trigger he puts on Mariki. I use the Fate Stitcher to untap Mariki, and retap my commander to steal Eric's Dr. Julius and the rocket itself. This forces me unfortunately to lose the Consecrated Sphinx, but when the trigger resolves destroying Mariki, she in turn drags Dr. Julius and the rocket down with her into their respective graveyards. Eric then swings the Border Guard at me, and I flash in Flicker Wisp, bouncing Phil's Stranglehold, and follow up with a Trophy Mage, who lets me find Thousand Year Elixir. I then chump Eric's creature with a Trophy Mage, and Stranglehold returns at the end of Eric's turn. I play a Command Tower for my land drop, and cast Thousand Year Elixir. I then recast Mariki, taking two from the Ancient Tomb. Moving to combat, I swing the Flicker Wisp at Eric for three. Max recasts Kindred Discovery once more in his main phase, naming Insects. He then passes to Phil. Phil recasts his Commander during his main phase, and makes sure everyone's good. Moving to combat, he swings Gisela at me, to which I respond by tapping Mariki and paying for the Rings trigger to steal Gisela and the Dawnbreak Reclaimer. 
this basically fogs Phil's combat, and with nothing else, Phil passes. Eric isn't too sure what to do with his deck at this point, and moves to combat swinging the border guard at me once more. I block with the Dawnbreaker, as I'm low on life, and Eric whips out success, giving his creature plus two plus two. This also gives the guard a plus one plus one counter, and the angel dies. In his second main phase, Eric recasts his general before side questing Dr. Julius. Eric gets up and gives him to another game, and passes turn. I play an Urborg, Tomb of Yogmoth, and swing seven points of damage at Max, gaining four from the Gisela. Max plays an island and casts Curse of the Swine to exile Mariki. I get a boar token, and Gisela dies. Max then takes one from the Shivan Reef to cast Goblin Bombardment, and passes turn. Phil plays a Sulphur as Springs, and moves to combat. He swings Kalia and the Charger at Max, and Phil pays for the extra combat step the Charger triggers for him. Phil then resolves Kalia's ability, and puts into play Tauriel, Reckoner of Souls. This does 11 damage to Max, and in his second main phase, Phil swings enough to kill Max. Phil then casts Imperial Rites, bringing back Bruna, who in turn brings back Gisela. Phil then moves to his end step, and the meld triggers jamming together Bruna and Gisela. I flash in Mariki while the trigger's on the stack, and let the meld occur. Once it's finished, I then tap Mariki, taking two from the Ancient Tomb to pay for the rings, and steal Phil's Brizella, Voice of Nightmares, and Hellkite Charger. Eric untaps and goes to get Dr. Julius, who gets two counters. Eric then moves to combat, swinging his two creatures at Phil for 12. I play Mystic Gate and move to combat, swinging everything I can at Phil for 18 and gain 9 life. I also pay for the Hellkite Charger's ability, thanks to the Chromatic Lantern, and I then move to my second combat step. I swing for lethal at Phil, and moving to my second main phase, I use the Fate Stitcher to untap Mariki and retap her, paying for the rings to steal Eric's two only creatures. Eric draws for turn and plays a forest. And, as luck would have it, he realizes he's dead next turn, and scoops it up after casting the enchantment. Game review time, so that was a bit of a silly game. Dr. Julius Jumble Morph was certainly... unique? And it makes me kind of interested to see if we'll end up with the legendary creature cards remaining, even if we lose the other unstable cards. Mareki, and I'm probably gonna get a million comments as I've mispronounced her name, was a lot of fun to play, and I like the idea of stealing multiple creatures, and then when she untaps, she kills them. It was like pseudo-removal slash mind control magic, so that was a lot of fun. Max was kind enough to help me test out the Locust God, and from what I saw, it still needs a bit of work, even though big threats like Mana Echoes, Skull Clamp, and Kindred Discovery certainly made the deck a threat. Lastly, I'm not too sure what to say about Phil's Kalia deck, as it seemed to be pretty much a standard deck with a lot of angels, demons, and things that he could cheat out. It was kind of cool to see the meld creatures flip, and I did enjoy stealing them. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta, you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash mtgmudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash mtgmudsta. This video is brought to you in part by support from my Patreons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit my Patreon link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.